So I, I, I only have three things to say to you today. One is I want to tell you something about yourselves and tell you something about polytrauma and tell you something about the DNA. So because you already know it, it's kind of reminding you of something. The second thing is nice I to want to up. share a fear uh, with you, a fear that I have. And the third thing is, again, coming from South Dakota, I want to uh, plant a seed. I want to um, uh, maybe throw out a challenge. Uh, or if I do it right, maybe it'll be a hypnotic suggestion. And five years down the road, I'll look back and say, wow, that was cool. How did that happen? Because what I'm going to talk about is something that will happen because we all make it happen together. So the first thing is, um, something about you and something about us. If you have seen even one returning combat veteran from Iraq and Afghanistan, you've been part of something uh, that's unparalleled in our nation, and probably unparalleled in the history of humanity. And that is having an enormous group of people in a very systematic way taking care, taking care of 2.7 million people that have been off the war. 2.7 million people have been deployed. 1.8 million are uh, eligible for VA care. We've seen about 1.12 million of them. And looking at your case alone, having screened over 900,000 people for traumatic brain injury, when people used to come back from war, someone would say, oh yeah, I got you know knocked out a time or two, or I got my bell rung or whatever. We have systematically taken care of, screened 900,000 people for TBI. So just the TBI piece alone is unparalleled. The PTSD treatment alone is unparalleled. The treatment for chronic pain is far beyond its, where it's ever been before. So you are part of something, again, that is um, unparalleled in human history in terms of people taking care of folks coming back from the war in a very systematic way. Now, my fear. My fear is that I've heard people in very high places in the UK and other places in our nation say, okay, these conflicts are over, so let's uh, turn the page and let's go on to a new chapter. When I heard that, I thought, well, that's okay to go on to a new chapter if we have digested and learned and, and if we have paid attention to the chapter we just finished. And as we move ahead in the story, if we carry that information on with us so that the story is taking us someplace. So my fear is that We've done all this work in post-deployment care and polytrauma and advances in PTSD, which is all good. But my fear is that we will reenact what Abram Gardner um, noticed after World War I when he was taking care of veterans in World War II. He said, we already know what we need to know to take care of these folks, and yet we're not taking care of them. So that leads me to the third thing, is that um, I hope that what we can do at this point that we make the transition from times of war to times of peace is to take this chapter that we're just finishing and to build on it. To take all of the collective wisdom of the people in this room that have been taking care of people coming back from war, all of the people in the VA that have been taking care of people coming back from war for a decade now, the longest, over a decade, the longest war we've ever had, tap into that collective wisdom to build a system for future deployments that takes into account traumatic brain injuries or infectious agents or other exposures or physical injuries or diagnosable mental health conditions or sub-syndromal mental health conditions or whatever it might be so that we have something in place for future deployments. So as you look at these pictures, you know, if we think in terms of what we need in VA, or as a nation for that matter, let's not just talk about VA, let's talk about us as a nation, taking care of people we send off to war. You can see polytrauma, you can see chronic pain, you can see neurology, you can see exposure of, of agents, you can see all of these things we need to know about and be able to do a good job with it if we're gonna take care of people coming back to war. So what I'm proposing is that we create collectively, now the other, I should add that the other source of experience and um, wisdom is what? Our veterans. We have millions of veterans that have gone off to war and are living among us now. And tapping into the wisdom of those who have been taking care of them 
and the wisdom of those who have experienced this and their families, then we might as well tap into the wisdom of the nation as a whole to um, have a conversation as a nation right now. Wouldn't that be something, as a nation, to have a conversation? Not an argument, not a debate, although we have different points of view, but a conversation that's taking us someplace. And it's a conversation that is has a kind of a common goal in mind. And that conversation would lead us to creating a roadmap for the odyssey in, for our nation. In the past, most cultures have had rituals and, and sort of processes in place for warriors that went off and came back home. We don't really. You know, we say, well, send them to the VA. Well, we're getting better and better at that being a very good thing to happen. Because when they come to the VA, and the, and the, the brilliance of what you've done in polytrauma, and, and, and the beauty and the wisdom that's come from it, is that you realize that traumatic brain injury and all these different injuries are not a bunch of different things. They're a, they're a complicated experience that a person has that really demands a, an integrated community of people with different sorts of things to support them, working together, in order to have a successful journey. So, you know, one way of looking at a roadmap, this is a, a roadmap of Napoleon's army going east to Moscow and then going back afterwards. And if you look at that map, the big fat yellow line is the army heading east. And the beauty of, of this map is that um, it looks at geographical location, it looks at temperature, which is down in the lower part, it looks at the size of the, of the force. So that's an army, big fat yellow army going east, getting smaller and smaller, temperature, nutritional problems, combat. They get to Moscow, they turn around because it's the middle of the winter, they come back, and the little black line on the left is the army when they got back. And these are real people. You know, these are, these are men and women like we, the, that we see day in, day out. So you can also look at this as an individual who goes off to this experience really empowered and empowered best shape in their lives and ready to go. And it's a very depleting experience. And when they come home, they can even be more depleted. So when we think about the road maps, this is a map of Virginia from Sir Francis and Drake in what, 16th century or something like that. And um, up above, down below, you see the Atlantic, and then sort of up off the top of the uh, map is the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> so, you know, and they had a kind of an idea of there was this land mass. But in, in this, if you look at the features, too, the main features that you see, and I'm sorry it's so kind of confusing, but are waterways. Because the only way people got around was on boats. So, you know, it was, it was what they knew at the time. So we can look at this as coastal employment care roadmap um, in, uh, back in those days. What we're trying to do is to create, and now we are able to create a roadmap that has many more features and much more granularity and much more, it's much more useful to us to help a person with the Odyssey, with their return from war. And if you look at the most enduring um, pieces of literature in Western civilization, it's the Iliad and the Odyssey. And if you read them, the Iliad is it's pretty straightforward. It's, it's combat and it's terrible and awful, but you read it and you sort of think, it's like reading the Matterhorn by Carl Marlantis of, of, of Vietnam experiences. But if you read the Odyssey, it, it's crazy, all the things that are going on. It's really bizarre. There's spirits and there's, and there's all these uh, forces of, there's fruits that make you forget, and there are the, you know, women that sing so beautifully, you crash into the rocks because you can't pay attention, and, and, um, and you encounter the spirit of your mother who has died from grief. That's what the Odyssey is. It's much more complex. And so really what we've been doing with our coastal plan care is trying to appreciate that complexity and trying to create a roadmap that's more like this uh, than this. It's just more useful in helping a veteran get to where they're going. And to help, and it's not just the veteran, but this is about us as a nation. You know, how do we support one another when we're having a hard time? How do we support people that have served us? Um, how do we support each other when we've gone through things that have maybe turned our lives upside down? So, how do we put this conversation in motion? If someone can figure that out, we have all this you know, social media and ways of connecting people, and could we put in place a, a national conversation that's led by veterans from all the different cohorts? Vietnam veterans, there are elders at this point. You know, we still have to bring more poor veterans too, but led by veterans and their families, supported by all of us supported by our nation 
to say, here's, here's what we can do at this point to take care of people we send off to war. And so if we do send people off to the war in the future, we don't spend, I, I, I can't remember if it was uh, Mikhail that was saying how much we've done in the first two or three years of the war. And it's fabulous. Um, and it's like, no, I think, actually. Yes, right. And, and it's, that was really good. It's impressive when we look at what would be even better is that it would be to have in place when, person, when people go off. So the first person that comes back, boom, here's the roadmap. Here's where we, we're here for you in a way that's going to work for you. So, but what the roadmap is really about isn't charts and maps and roads and mountains and, you know, that sort of thing. It's really trying to, to walk along with someone who has been through this to help them get to this. How can we support those who have served and have through so much uh, in a way that really helps them rejoin us, helps them get home? Helps them, helps them have this successful odyssey. And like I say, it's not just to their benefit and their family's benefit, that would be enough. But it's for us as a nation, as a people. This is who we are, this is how we are, and this is what we do for one another when we've been through experiences like this. So I commend you in your work, keep up the good work, 